Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our look at the Plex Media Server. So here we are inside uh, Plex Media Server. Now if this is the first screencast you're seeing, uh, you may want to go back and view part one where I cover uh, how to prepare your media for Plex and how to install the Plex Media Server. Uh, but once you have the server installed, uh, this is the screen that we've got. Again, it is a web interface. And so let's go ahead and talk about how to add your media. Now, one of the ways you do that in Plex, it's called Add a Library. And you'll see your libraries over here on the side. And so we can click this button to add a library. We can click this button to add a library. Or it conveniently has this Add Library button right in the middle. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to say Add Library. And we get this drop down uh, that has a select our type of library. And so, again, we've got this layout for movies, uh, TV shows, our music, photos, and home videos. And so those would be any videos, of course, you would take of your kids or your family or whatever. So let's get started by adding a movies library. So we're going to click on movies. And we can name this whatever we want. And so I'm going to call this one here, let's just call this Movies Plex, just for the purposes of our demonstration here. Okay, once I've got that, you can choose your language over here as well. You can see all the different language support that Plex has. And so we're just going to leave it at English. And we're going to say Next. Now what it's going to do is ask us to browse uh, to the media folder for that particular one. So we're going to browse here. We knew it was on the Drobo. And let's go down to Video. And we had DVD Collection. And here's our Movies Plex folder right there. And so we're just going to say Add. And so now we've added that, and it shows the, um, the actual path to getting to that folder. We're going to say Add Library. And so what it's going to do is add the library. And you notice right away what it's starting to do is it's added all the different files that we have inside that particular folder. You can see here that it's starting to add all of the metadata uh, for these particular items. And you can see down here it's telling you kind of what it's doing as it does it. And so slowly it will start to add that information in there. And you can see also I've got this little icon here that shows that it's updating. And you can start to see now that it's starting to add the artwork uh, to my various uh, movies there. And down below you can see what it's doing in terms of how it's adding all this. So I'm going to let this run and then when it's finished I'll come back and show you what it looks like when everything's been added. Okay, so here we are on the other side. You can see that everything has been downloaded. Now, I didn't add any of this artwork myself. Plex goes and does that all by itself, adding the artwork uh, to each of these movies. You can see I've got a couple that didn't get added here. You can see this uh, Napoleon Dynamite one and this X-Men First Class. Uh, right away, I can see that probably the spelling in this one is what caused it not to be found. Uh, so that was an error on my part. And I'm going to show you how you can fix that uh, in a screencast on metadata. Uh, but I just wanted to show you how this works. And so as you can see, I've got all these movies with these great movie posters that have been pulled up. Now, if I just click into one of these movies, for instance, like this, it's going to bring it up. And you can see not only does it give me the movie poster here, but it gives me a background as well, a cut from the actual movie scene with all this great metadata, right? It's got the slogan on here. It's got director, writer, and cast. It's got... The audio, it's got, uh, again, a synopsis of it, tells me what the, uh, what the video and audio looks like over here, gives me the star rating and, and the actual movie rating. I mean, it really has a lot of stuff here. And then I've got these extras that are built in here as well uh, that I can watch. Now, a lot of these extras uh, on here in things, um, I'll have trailers and stuff like that. It's just really nice that it's able to add these things in here for you. And this was all done just by doing that library scan. I didn't have to do any extra work. Now, inside this screen with this media, I've got some options down the side here that I just wanted to show you. Uh, I can actually uh, play the movie from here. You know, if I just uh, click on play, it's going to start to spin there and it'll start to play the movie. And you can see it's uh, going to bring it up for me in an uh, online movie player. And so it's starting to play. And so you can see the movies right there. I just paused it. I've got all the regular controls that I'd have for a movie. Uh, you can see up here, too, I can do things like closed captioning, and I can do some settings uh, to the movie as well. All right, I can view it as original, or I can also uh, lower the actual size of the movie that's being streamed so that if I'm on a browser with Internet issues, I can kind of lower the quality there to get a better stream so that it doesn't buffer on me too much. So... Uh, again, some really nice stuff. I can do the same thing here with the sound. I can change the sound. 
And then in here, I can do, if I have any subtitles, I can put those in here as well. I didn't put any on there. Uh, so again, really nice that you can play this right in your browser. Let me just put this down. Uh, the other thing I have over here is, you, it says here play trailer. Now, the reason I have trailers on there is I do have a Plex Pass. I do have the premium membership. And I'll tell you more about that later. Uh, I can edit the data here at any time. I'm going to show you how to do that in another screencast. I can add this to a playlist as well. So I can create a playlist and say I want to play a series of movies in a row and have that playlist set up. Let's go ahead and cancel that. I can refresh it if I don't like the data and I think it needs to be refreshed. I can mark it as watched. You can see here it says unwatched. Once I watch it, it'll show it as watched or I can mark it here myself. Uh, sync, that's another premium feature that I've got. And then I can play next, add to queue, optimize, I can analyze it again, fix an incorrect match, unmatch, and I can even download the video file if I want to do that as well. I just want to show you that that's built into the player. So let's go back to the main screen. Uh, on the main screen I've got similar uh, options here. Uh, you can see I've got this filtering option that I can filter it by date added. You see how it changes it around or release date so that that'll get uh, changed around or date viewed or name uh, there it goes by name rating all that kind of stuff even by resolution and I can even add a new filter if I want to and choose what I want to filter this by so it's pretty robust in what it allows you to do let me just put that close there I can shuffle all these movies to play them all at once again add them to a playlist select deselect sync and then optimize if I want to and I'm going to tell you more about how to optimize the movies and what it means uh, my views in here uh, are different as well uh, I can change the view to a details view that gives me more of the synopsis uh, and you see when I hover over it I can always play it from here I can edit or I can get access to that same drop down menu I showed you earlier uh, let's go back to the area I was at here I can also view them as a list if I just want to quickly sort my movies and view them and see which ones I've got, or I can go back to poster. Uh, so it's really nice. Again, I got a little settings area here where I can edit the library, and again, I can even delete the library right from here. So that's the movies area. It gives you an idea of what's, uh, what's built into Plex here. Now at any time, I can just go back to home by just clicking on the home button. And you can see now that I'm on my home uh, screen here, I've got my recently added movies in a row that I can play right from here. And I can even shuffle through them uh, backward and forward here, uh, which is great. Uh, again, I can choose how big I want to view, view the artwork. You can see that kind of changes how many I view on a screen. And so it gives me that option. And you'll notice over here now I've got this Movies Plex folder on the side over here as well. So let's go ahead and add uh, another library. So I'm just going to click on the plus here to add a library. This time we're going to do TV shows. And so we're going to call it uh, TV shows. I'm just going to leave that alone. We'll say next. Now I need to browse to the media folder. And if you remember, we had that again in the same location on our Drobo. I had that under the collection here. I had it under TV shows. And we wanted to go King of Queens. And we're going to add that uh, in here. So I'm just going to add that folder and say Add Library. And so now it's going to do the same thing that we did previously uh, with movies, but it's going to just be adding all of the television show information here. You can see all the seasons starting to come up for this particular television uh, show. And so just like I did before, I'm going to let it do its thing and start adding all of the information in there. And when it's done, I'll show you what it looks like on the other side. Okay, here we are uh, back in Plex, and you can see the King of Queens uh, got downloaded here. You can see that it's showing it as a show. I got one show in there. It's got 208 episodes I haven't watched yet. So let's go ahead and click into this, and you can see that it's added the television show. It looks a little bit different. It gives an overview of kind of the show and all of that. Uh, gives a nice background and then down below it shows all of the various seasons with each of the covers on it and the different episodes and each of these episodes the number there shows me how many I have to watch that I haven't watched yet so if I click into this you can see now I get the individual episodes for season one with all of the different metadata there and if I were to just to uh, click on one of them here you can see that it gives the actual uh, information this is the pilot shows again director and all this metadata and tells me what's happening in that show and you can see season one episode one and so there it is and I've got the same um, information down the side that I just covered earlier and again just to get back I can click this little arrow on the top and just click my way back all the way up to the front so again you can see how it just looks outstanding uh, the way Plex lays things out. So that's TV shows. Again, if I go back home, you can see recently added television shows up down here in a separate line. So this kind of gives me the different things that I've added. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and add another library. Again, we're just going to click the plus here. And let's add a music 
uh, library. I'm just going to call it music and we're going to say next. And now I've got to browse for a media folder. So let me do that. And so uh, it'll be in here in my music. I just put one little simple thing together here uh, with U2. We're going to say add and we'll say next. So it's, this is just going to be one particular one. And so I can create a premium Plex music library. Now what this does is it gives me more information on bios and smart mixes and things like that. I can create a basic one or a Plex one. I'm just going to create a basic one to show you what that looks like. We're going to say next. And now I can import from iTunes if I want to. Now this is great if you've got all your music in iTunes. You can click this and it will import all your iTunes music. Uh, you can use your embedded tags if you've got them uh, to help them uh, sort those that information. You can choose the agent, whether it's your personal media artists or Last FM. And I can use Last FM settings. I'm just going to uh, include in dashboard and I'm just going to say add to library. And so now it's going to add that album, and you can see it's looking for the information uh, from the internet, and it should start to scan that and eventually show up in here. Uh, sometimes it takes a little bit. You can see it's loading the metadata. There's the tags. And eventually I should have all of the metadata lined up here for this particular album, and there it is. And so again, if I click into it, you see I get this nice cover art uh, over here. I get a nice background. And here's all of the songs that I've got that I can play. And so there's my music. And so you can do this for a whole bunch of different albums. Again, if I go back home and I've got this all set up, you can see recently added music now shows up. And I get another line for that. So you can begin to see how this works. All right, so let's, uh, let's come over here and do one more thing here. Let me just show you what the photos uh, area looks like here. We're going to call it photos and say next. I'm going to browse to a folder here for that. And so I'm just going to go pictures. And I've got Plex samples here. We're going to go ahead and add that. And just say add library. And so what it's going to do now is add all of these various photos. And you can see that it's added this information here. And I've got these Apple wallpapers. And again, if I put it up here, I get this nice slideshow effect where I can you know, go photo to photo looking through what I've got there. I can expand it to full screen if I want as well. I'm just going to go ahead and lower that. And so that's how you add uh, photos to your Plex library. So again, let's go back home, and you can see we've got all our information there, including recently added photos, and we've got all these different libraries. And again, you can add movie libraries from different locations if you want, so you don't have to have everything in one folder. Plex really is uh, does a good job of adding uh, this information to your library. Now, one more thing I want to show you before we go is there is an online content uh, area here where you can add channels. And let me just show you what that looks like. Click on channels. You can see that iTunes Music and Video uh, has been added in here as a, as a channel. Uh, we can go, because it knows I've got iTunes, I can go in here to install channels. And I can browse various online channels that I can install. And so, for instance, I can see what's new. And so it'll load up all the different uh, channels that are available that they've added into Plex. Uh, most popular, categories, all of that. I can say more. And I can look here at different available plugins and check for updates and that sort of thing. Well, if I just go back to Featured, for instance, let's just say I want to add Twit TV. So I'm going to install that. So it's going to go ahead and install this particular channel. And what it does is it adds it to Plex. So I can always come back in here and update it if I need to. Uh, or I can browse to it. Let's go ahead and click that. And you see I get this little check mark here that shows that it's been installed. And so if I just uh, if I just go back again here, let's just go back in our area here. And you can see now Twit TV shows as a channel that's been installed. And you can see I can sort by video. These are video channels. Here's music channels. And if I've got a photo channel, I can do that as well, which I don't have. Uh, if I ever need to check for updates on these channels, in case the channels updated themselves, I can click here to check for updates. Uh, there's also a little settings area here that allows me to see what the Bitstream uh, provider would be. So what do I want, Ustream or one of these other ones? I'm just going to go ahead and cancel. If I go back uh, home again, you can see I've got all my information here lined up. Uh, but if I want to get my online channels, I've got to come over here to see what those online channels are. And that's how I get access to them. Okay, so let me just go back here. Uh, on this online content area, there's also a watch later and recommended uh, that shows up. Again, I don't have anything set to watch later. Again, if I hit this little icon, uh, what I can do is if I went to the web, I can put this little thing up in my browser icon up here, hit Plex it, and then it will show up to be able to be watched later and will show up in a queue. And I'm going to show you how to do that later, but I wanted to acknowledge that that was there so that you kind of got an idea of what that looked like. 
Well, that gives you an idea of how to get your libraries and your meta, uh, media into Plex. Uh, again, it's very powerful in what it does in terms of pulling all this stuff down and keeping everything in one place. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.